All right, guys, good morning. All right, so let's give a shout. So Mr. Mark Moore, Roanne, Jess, got everybody. Good morning, everybody. All right, so all right, so all you window peeps, there's a uh, there's a great, great, great video that we made yesterday. Alex and I did in the uh, showroom. The video quality is horrible because I filmed it on this thing the whole time we were going through. But the content is rock solid, which means it's uh, me actually going through a uh, inspection inside and outside on a window and then talking about the great talking points you want as far as infiltration, conduction, convection, solar heat gain, basic operational liability, uh, installation superiority, what the whys are, what voids warranties. It's a great, a great segment that you can uh, try to grab a hold of and just watch it. And if you can duplicate Jess, I think you're on, uh, I'll mute you real quick. There you go. Um, basically, so if you're on, if you duplicate that and can replicate it, it's a big deal. One of the things that we did yesterday, um, you know, I had Alex came from another organization, right? So uh, one of the things that we found out that, you know, they don't teach them to inspect where the heck, right? So I was like, one of the big differences is, you know, when you get into there, if you're filling gaps with huh and um, and basically just blabbing talking points, uh, sometimes it can make our presentation go a really long time and, and really you're not adding value. So one of the things that we were talking about yesterday is, hey, what, after he got done, I let him roll through and I said, after you completed your inspection here, if I'm six months to a year out, what did you do in your inspection to make me feel like I needed to move forward to today? Or even next week. I said, what did you do in your inspection to make me feel like, again, there was better urgency, that I, I was the expert and you wanted to trust me and not have to look anywhere else. What it, what did what it was included in my inspection to make that happen, right? So you know the answer was that he goes, you know, really, uh, um, I don't know. He said, I said, well, that's a challenge. I said because if somebody's already going to buy, and I tell them everything about the product and you know all the generalities and what I call petting windows, doors, or bathrooms, it's not really about that right that's not what an inspection is an inspection is not just looking at looking at their obvious right it's not just about hearing the things that they tell you is wrong it's you got to absorb that right because they got to tell you first they got to take ownership for it. you put them in a slice of life right even on the bass if you watch that window one i you, you kind of relay it to what we do in bass and i'll do one for the bass as well then it'll teach you basically all the questions I'm asking in the very beginning to get them pulled in, to put them in a slice of life, make them think of things that they're currently not thinking of, right? Through my questions, not my, not my statements, right? If all I'm doing is talking the entire time, then I'm not giving them time to process it, right? It's just like we talked about last meeting. If, I, if they listen, they're not going to learn, right? If they're involved, they're, they're going to remember, right? That's what I wanted them to be involved. So how do I get involved? I've got to ask them questions that basically they're going to be able to answer. And then it relates to the questions of what I'm trying to go on to, not just random questions, but like things Does that concern you. Why does that concern you? And have them explain it. You know, how long has that been going on? Is there a certain time of day that that happens into, right? How long ago do you remember it? What have you done to try to fix it? Wow, that sounds frustrating. Tell me a little bit about that. So we got to get into understanding the why, right? In order to sell John Brown what John Brown buys, first see John Brown through John Brown's eyes, right? And you people that are going against people on the window side of it, if they sell windows for less than you buy a pair of eyeglasses, doesn't that sound pretty stupid? So, I mean, so look at it. We got to relate things in our, in our repertoire that are helping us move towards that dial. So my challenge is watch that video, right? That video has, I just did it unlisted and I had it on private because I didn't want to share it with anybody outside of our group. But the, but, the, but the thing gives you a lot of strategic, even if you, even if the content on the back side is not completely in alignment with you, watch the moves 
watch the pain, watch the delivery and watch the tie downs, right? There's tons of delivery and tie downs and it's going to help you move forward to the next level. So my question to you is, you know, basically my question to you is what is it that you feel like you do so well in the inspection that it takes somebody from six months to a year out and then takes them to today? What I'd like to hear is from the group, right? So Mark, Mark Lance, what is something in the inspection you do or should do that is going to take you, congratulations on your sale yesterday, by the way. What, what is something you do or should do that moves them from six months from a year from now to today? What, what do you do in your inspection? You're the veteran guy here. Uh, what, I, what I try to point out is, is try to uh, pull out as much pain and discomfort as I can and also damage and how much it's going to uh, actually cost if we need to replace that knee wall. As you know, I've got the little collapsible mirror in my pocket, and I run that around uh, the window when the customer's right there. And I, uh, without picking out detail, I go, whoa. And then that's about all I say. I just say, well, that's something's, something's not white right here, you know. And uh, just pick out the obvious. Pick out the obvious as best you can from water damage on the exterior. And then if, there's, if that's seeped through to the interior, too, make sure to make a big point out of that. Cool. So it's pain points, right? And then yes. when you uh, when you tie that in, one of the things I want to talk about that's a big mistake that a lot of people do is when they, before they even get to an inspection, they start talking about different types of products. They talk about vinyl, or they talk about wood or aluminum flat or basically wood composite or fiber or whatever the hell it is, right? They should start talking about products before they even do an inspection, right? That, that is so irrelevant. You don't know what product you're using or even what product to offer them until you're done with the inspection. Because, right, if I'm inspecting condition and environment, how am I supposed to do that at the kitchen table when I haven't even looked at their windows or doors? So remember, don't give a solution too early. Don't even talk about an option too early. Again, talk about basically you're, you're there to fill up, right? So my... What, I, what I'm teaching Alex is you don't really start talking until you have permission to inspect. So they give you permission to inspect. You're, the only thing you're doing for that first part of the appointment is learning, right? I'm learning. The only time I'm the only thing I'm really saying is I'm asking a lot of questions, explaining my COVID or cost savings program before we get up to go look at the window. So I set the table and the agenda. And then basically on that point, besides setting the table and the agenda, I'm not talking about anything else until they get permission to inspect. I am doing nothing but finding out what they know, what they've done to try to fix it, how much time, the condition environment, the inside and the outside wall conditions, right? So if any of you guys are talking about product before that point, you're missing the boat. You're doing something wrong. You're introducing something into that equation that does not need to be there. All right, good, good stuff, Mark. Jess, what about you? What are you doing to add urgency and, con and consider yourself to be the expert before you even break out a product? Tell me about your inspection. What is it you do to build urgency, create need, and basically make you different? Well, um, I love it when there's, um, you know, the, the obvious mold in the, in the shower. Um, I've just started walking around and I kind of point at it and I'm like, what do you, what do you think's going on here? You know, and I mean, whatever, I'll get whatever answer it is. And like, what, what do you think is happening behind the wall to cause, you know, or how much more damage do you think is going on behind the wall than we see here? Or if people have tried to cock over it, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty, the inspections are getting easier for me with, if it's a, um, if it's tile, I still sometimes struggle with the, with the all one piece that are just, it's just a builder grade crappy material. Um, I mean, I guess you just, I don't know. I still struggle with those because sometimes they don't look that bad and really people just want to replace them. Yeah. 
one piece is Jess. Correct me if I'm wrong, but those are generally are made of fiberglass, right? Yes. Well, then I go. That's and I pointed out in the, um, you know, the the slideshow, you know, like so the remember, one piece. Remember the Biore strip we talked about, right? The fiberglass, yes. Mm -hmm. Bacteria. So you yes. Pull out, does anyone take a bath in this thing? Yeah, and well, in the yeast infections, yes, <laughs> it's always gross. <laughs> Again, but you got, but you build it with disgust, right? Yeah. So, oh my gosh, you got the. Oh, I feel sorry for you guys. You got, you guys got the worst kind. What? Oh, you ever seen? Have you ever, have you ever studied these things before? Oh, it's absolutely disgusting when you realize it. You put this under a microscope. This is like bacteria ridden, right? These are porous, right? Do you know what porous means? So. So again, you get in there and you're talking about that thing. You know, porous means basically it, it, it in bread, it's got pores. Kind of like your nose, you would take one of those blueberry strips and rip it off, right? And you see it looks like craters and basically spikes all over it. Think about that, right? That's all the dirt. That's all the dirt and basically blackheads and things like that coming out of your nose. So if you think about that, what's hidden inside your fiberglass tub, man? It's actually disgusting because when we get in there, we want to get out cleaner than we got in, right? So if you think about it, Jess, I mean, even if you do a good job cleaning it, you're still not stopping what's in those pores, right? Do you wash your face every day? I'm sure you do, right? So even though you wash your face every day, there's still stuff that gets stuck in your pores of your skin that need to eventually come out of there. So the, the bad thing about it, when you got porous material, number one, things hit and grab, which means it's got surface tension, which means all that dirt and debris that comes off your body grabs a hold of that wall and, it's, and it actually sucks to the side of the wall and it surfaces. And some of that stuff never fully dries out, so it stays water droplets on the wall. You ever seen water droplets stay on a wall? Bad thing is when you shower, you go from outside to in, you got a lot of bacteria your body's carrying on you, right? And what happens that bacteria, when you wash it off, it gets in there and it gets ingrained and stuck into the tub, right? So those one-piece molds are probably the most disgusting things on the face of the planet because when people buy houses, they don't buy the most expensive square foot, they buy them the cheapest. So these molds they stick in here, they're just the dirt cheap of all dirt cheap. But the problem is basically they look really good for the first six months. Then it starts to go down because there's a clear coat that wears off from heat. And then what happens is you get those grains in there. You get all that bacteria, grime, dirt, all that basically infection almost creates like a breeding ground inside of the, inside the pores inside of there, right? If you took one big blurry strip and put it on your bathtub and took it out, could you imagine the filth and disgust you would see in there? Did you realize they call this? I mean, a lot of times it's number one number one cause of athlete's feet because your feet are setting in this thing all day long and number one yeast infections, which is, I know it sounds gross, but let's be realistic. This is where we go to get clean, right? And not to mention, but how many different people shower in here and are you guys the first owners of the house? So think about how many people's bacteria are actually living inside of that surface. Now, let me ask, is this something that you would ever consider trying to repair this or doing a super good cleaning job or is it something you feel like this needs to be replaced? Yeah. I love the Biore so, analogy. Build a picture for them where they feel like they look at that thing and never want to step back in it again, right? That's that filth and disgusting. That's the one thing about it. Remember, porous, 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 culture marble, you know, basically lots of things, even, even marble. Marble by itself is porous, right? Which is why you got to seal it every couple of years. So there's all these things you can talk about pores and porous and invasive breeding grounds and bacteria and all those other things that get stuck in there. So, you know, get them so vile and disgusted with it that they want solid surface, right? Mm -hmm. That's why the finish with you know, what we put back in here is almost as important, if not more important than what you're taking out, right? So let's, let's talk about the things we've got to accomplish here to make sure that we're not going to live in that bacteria zone again. And you said that's important to you, right? Getting clean. And having to clean it. Does that make sense, Jess? Mm hmm Yep. So again, remember, there is, you can talk about all the fun things and all the change in the world that they want and how good they're going to make it feel. But at the end of the day, remember, eight, 11 receptors in the brain are based off fear. Three are based off gain, right? So if I focus on the three and not on the eight, I'm off balance, right? I need to make sure, again, there is fear and pain to be brought because the art of running away from a problem is better than running towards a solution, right? So like if I knew that my, I knew that my tires were gonna go, go flat any day, 
that's more of a motivator than knowing that my tread is low and I probably need to look at getting new tires. Most would be like, ah, I can get more time on that tire, right? But if we look at it, we see a mark saying that something's telling us that, man, we could get stuck on the side of the road, the flat tire. That's a bigger motivator to get us in there to go change our tires than basically just low tread. We're like, eh, we'll, we'll let it go a little longer, right? So again, that fear, uh, the fear of pain is better than the fear of gain. So we got to make sure that we're, we're relating that stuff to homeowners and we're building that picture for them that they just can't see, right? If you just go look at a fiberglass tub or like one of those shells and they do a good job cleaning it or halfway good job cleaning it, it's not what you can see, it's what you can't see that they need to pay attention to. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Charlie, what about you, man? Well, that's one of my, as you know, <laughs> my biggest weaknesses and like you call it petting the windows. So that's like my, my Achilles heel and then I have to work on, but, um, gonna it's really just, you're going to keep petting windows. You're going to keep petting windows. We're going to keep petting windows. We're going to have to charge for our appointments because we don't, we don't give petting Zeus for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. You, you had pointed that out and, and you know, I was working with Sean with this is asking questions and not being the expert and not talking for them. And, um, that's just my, I really got to flip that a 180 on that and just, shut up like you say diarrhea of the mouth and ask questions so if you think about that charlie real quick right you know one of the things about that is you know it's not it's not a new conversation right so we already know what you got to do it's just yes. about action so how are you going to take action to make sure that you stop doing what you're currently doing and you're going towards what you need to do what is, what well, is like, a habit you create? How are you going to get there? Well, you know, one of the things was during inspection. Um, I think my inspection was weak. Like you said, I was like petting the windows, and so it's more asking them about, you know, what do you like about your window, right? And then um, what do you not like? Um, like you had said, the all the questions on the back of that sheet. Go through those, and I kind of moved away from those. You know, again, you you're, think you're the expert now. So um, it's just going back to that and asking, like I really wouldn't ask that many questions. So I have to um, ask the questions and then let them answer and keep probing and probing and probing until I get the, you know, you know, diagnose the problem, let them see the problem, not let me tell them what the problem is. Have them come to that conclusion, not me point it out to them because then it's suspect. Yeah. So remember, when, a lot of it is like when you ask some questions, right? In the very beginning of it, you know, fast forward six months from now, what would your new window be doing? Your own is not. And they'll tell you, right? If you can't find it, you can't come up with the words, you know, get, get back to the freaking basics, man. The basics are what sell. You know, the funny thing is when somebody starts brand new, they either basically have a slow start, then they jump up or they jump up right away, right? Cause you don't know any different. One of the things I joke around, you know, when we were RBA, you know, we took this from a crap hole branch to like rank third in the country. And then what happened is then the new RBA people came in and now they're ranked 101 out of 119. They've completely flipped the opposite back the other way and completely suck. Right. So like the training that provides garbage, you know, their whole program's garbage over there. And then, you know, to, to be 101 out of 119 is freaking horrible. Right. And guess what they're doing, Charlie? They're doing exactly what you do, walking in there and trying to be the expert. People don't want an expert, they want to be heard, right? Think about going to a therapy appointment real quick, right? If you ever gone to a therapy or ever had to go to therapy as a kid or even an adult, you know, you don't feel good when you go and then somebody lectures you the entire time, right? You feel good when you go and you're able to share all your problems with people. And you got to think about it. We're like window therapists, door therapists, bathroom therapists, right? We're here to hear their problem and hear them out. And remember, as I've said it a thousand times, right? We need to be taking notes. And if we're not taking notes on all this great information that you give us. What gets, well, what, what's the reason why I go into it? I did a role play with Alex yesterday and I held on to some of my pains. I want to see if he could unleash it, right? So the, the pain was going to be the heat's coming in through the windows and it makes it super uncomfortable in our back bedroom, right? 
And he says, what's going on with windows? Ah, not much, you know, you're just old. And they kept asking me questions, got down into it. And finally he asked me the question, well, fast forward six months from now, what would you want your new windows to do that your windows aren't if they're already installed? I want that damn heat to stop in the bedroom. And he goes, oh, really? And then he, then he got that out of me a little bit, didn't go too far. He's not doing an inspection at the table. He then got, he got me up to the window. Then we started talking about the window. And then he was starting to ask me good questions. Then he went right back into being the expert again, right? Went back into tell selling. And I said, ah, stop, time out. Because again, we got to make sure that we let them tell us everything first. And when we know that, uh, that awkward silence happens or we no longer asking good questions, then we ask permission to inspect. When we ask permission to inspect and they give it to us, now the camera's on you. Now's the time to be an expert. And now you're educating them. But educating them, not just telling them everything. Do you understand that? No. Can you see how that affects you? Yes. Well, why? And then educate. Get them involved in the inspection. Right? Teach them. Just teach them. You're teaching them. Right? If you don't go and watch the video I did on the inspection, I have to tell you, I don't think you care about your career. Because again, the one thing it teaches you is the things that you need to know that you need to be good at. You need to watch just not the content I'm saying. Don't watch the content I'm saying. Watch the questions and the delivery and the amount of questions and the tie-ins on it. Because we got to make sure you are, you are executing this play, man. If you don't execute the inspection, and you don't, that pre-fill up before the inspection, it teaches you what to say on the inspection. And if you're not gathering all this information as you're going through, you're literally just going to always pet windows or you're going to be the expert and you'll sell 20% of the people out there because they're the only people that'll sit around and listen to you when you blab, right? Human attention span is 20 minutes. So what in that course of 20 minutes that you earned for that segment, did you do to take them from six months a year to today to where they feel like they can't go another day and they want you to be the expert that takes care of it? Ro, what do you got? Ro, Sorry, I'm waiting here. Oh, you're good. Um, so one thing I do, I feel like I'm doing differently in the inspection is not two offering days, solutions. Two, two in two days though, good job. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, I'm not offering solutions or trying to sell too early a solution that I'm, I'm spending more time in the needs inspection, letting just drawing everything out with the frame, the glass, how they want that want six months from now. I actually said that the past two appointments, okay, six months from now, if I were to wave a magic wand, what do you want it to feel like in here? What do you want your windows to do now, right? Um, and then also, if it's more of a hot button with the glass, I've educated myself more on glass um, and just using that in the, in the sit down. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. You know, that's, I love that. That's, you know, you can see the difference. In the last couple of days, you, you stroke the deal every day, right? So good job. Um, you know, if you guys don't have that insulated piece of glass with you, I would, I would take that insulated piece of glass you have, put it in your clipboard so you can talk about you want your windows to work like your walls, right? You know, your walls are an R12 to R15, your ceiling's like an R30 to R45, right? So we want our windows to work like our wall. Did you know what the R value of glass is? Does anyone on here know what the R value of glass is? Less than one. Less than one, all right? So if I have two, two panes of glass, then what's my R value? Less than two. Less than two. So if I don't have insulation inside my glass, then how well is that doing compared to my wall? So, so really the whole goal of the window is to make the window work in unison with the glass. Everything else is irrelevant because of the window and the glass fight each other like a bad dance partner, then literally it's, it's gonna fail anyways, right? See, we gotta put this thing in such simple layman terms, right? That's why that infinity video, that's why basically the, the last inspection video I did, if you watch those two and you link them together, man, you'll be on fire, I promise you. 
in a row, you got it. Perfect, right? Don't get the solution too early. Let me let me ask you a question. Think about this real quick. Okay. If I had a Christmas present and my wife bought me a Christmas present, and I was super excited to see that Christmas present, I asked enough questions to get her to tell me what that Christmas present is. Now she wrapped it and put it underneath the tree. So I already knew what the Christmas present was going to be by the time Christmas came. How excited am I going to be really to open that present? I think it's not going to be that exciting because I already know what to expect. So I'm going to come out and I have to fake any emotion to get it there. So again, think about that. If the Christmas present is the solution at the end of the project, you're giving the solution at the end and they're lashing onto the pain. If they already know what the solution is before you get there, then how are they going to be excited? How excited are they going to be to see the solution? So don't give your Christmas present too early. Wait till after you're done with your inspection and the keynote to get to the solution. Because taking them window shopping is relevant. Taking them bath shopping is relevant if you already told them what the fix is. Does that make sense? Hopefully a light bulb went on. That's a common sense thing. Scott, what do you got, my man? Uh, when I'm doing uh, the inspection, uh, I ask a lot of questions about if they understand how a window works and what it's there for. Um, if they have any concept of how the, the, the window is integrated into the wall to see what they know. That way, when I go into the differences between retrofit and reflash, I can reference back to that and say, okay, you know, what you were saying was partially correct. I find out what they know and then educate them on that. And then just point out issues that I want to reference back to later. If it's wood trim around stucco, that way I can reference back and say, hey, remember back uh, how the wood is around your windows. So how important do you think it is to make sure that you have a strong seal behind that wood so you don't have leakage. And I can reference back to that, just kind of asking them what they know and then things that I know I'm gonna to wanna to reference back to later so that I can poke at it a little bit more. And then they'll be thinking about it for a while. Like why, why did he ask the question about how do you think the wood ties into the, the window installer, how, how does the frame of the window tie into the stucco? And then I'll go into it there. And then on the glass, I'll, I'll ask a lot of questions. If I see any evidence of fading, um, you know, I'll be like, wow, okay, what happened here with the fading? And act like I don't know why that fading is there. And they'll be like, oh, this, this one gets a lot of sun. And I'm like, wow, that's that's done a lot of damage to your curtains here or your blinds or your flooring. And then I'll touch on that again later, why that won't happen anymore. Not, yeah, but remember, yeah, but remember that too. When they do that and they talk about that, Scott, what have you done to try to fix that so far? Right. How much time and money have you spent on that? Hell, it sounds like to me you've given up trying to fix that, right? Don't, don't forget those segue questions, right? Because then you're getting involved and you ask them, well, what have you done to try to fix that? If right. you know it's there, what have you done to try to fix it? See what I'm saying on that a little twist? Yeah. Kind of take don't it a little bit that. deeper. How frustrating has it been? Yeah, because if they gave you a hot button like that, what are you doing to latch onto it? Right. Well, okay. Sounds like that. How long have you noticed that happening? When did you first notice it? It's been six, eight months ago. Wow. Okay. So what have you done to try to take care of that? Have you put the blinds? What's going on? Yep. Oh, well, we really haven't done much, so we don't really know what to do. So it sounds like to me, you've given up trying to fix that for your start, right? Boy, sounds like it gets pretty hot in this room. So what's an average utility bill around here? What, 800,000 bucks? No, not that high. Probably like 500. Whoa. Wow. Are you happy with that? That sounds pretty dang expensive. You know, then you're getting real numbers on that, right? So don't forget, like watch that video. Watch that video. I promise you, you're going to take nuggets from that thing, right? And that's all good stuff, Scott. And then also remember when you're out there, you're talking about like retrofit. You're talking about what a piece of crap retrofit is. You get them to commit outside when they're looking at the window based on what you're talking about. If I put a Chevy engine in a Ford truck, 
Would they would Ford warranty the Chevy engine? Absolutely not. Would Chevy warranty the Ford truck? No, no one's going to do that. It's stupid, right? <laughs> so I take an old man window manufacturer, new one, I put them together. They're not going to warranty each other, right? There ain't no but there ain't no window manufacturer. Let's put you as a window manufacturer, right? If you're the window manufacturer, if something happened when there's a leak and went down in the knee wall, you as a manufacturer, you're going to cover that? Well, no. Okay. What if the old window caused your window to melt because it got really hot underneath it? Because can I stop aluminum from conducting heat? No. So if that caused it, would you warranty your window because of that? No, I wouldn't. So what you're telling me, really, the warranty is written to protect you, not, not the customer, right? I guess so. Wow. Huh? Light bulb, right? So what you're telling me is manufacturers don't write warranties to protect, protect people. They do it to protect themselves. Probably against basically bad contractors, distribution centers, people installing things where they don't need to be installed. They have to or they go bankrupt. They're not in business to be fixing problems. They're in business to make money. Would you hear that? Well, think about things like that. So it sounds like to me, you wouldn't put a retrofit window installation in here because it's not going to work, number one. But number two, no matter what the cost, right? Would you agree with that? How about you, Mary? John, yes. Remember, get to remove those objections out that could come in later. If I remove retrofit installation in our market, I've just taken 98% of the market out of the equation. Now it's me versus whatever, okay? So make sure you are basically becoming your own by removing things that could come up to be a potential, especially if they're shopping around and getting multiple estimates. <laughs> you got to kick that ass real quick. Hey, Dustin. So uh, another thing that I, that I, that I'm going to start using um, a question I haven't been asking that was just kind of a light bulb going off this morning. Um, and I sent you a video. Uh, it's actually here in San Diego of a company that was interviewed about retrofit installation. And he describes the window installation. And these are no joke. The actual words that come out of his mouth are like, it's like we're gluing it into place and it shows an installer putting a bunch of caulking around there. So mm -hmm. I went and found that company and he's just talking about all of the great things with retrofit that it's real quick. They're doing 23 windows and three doors in a day and a half. It's mm -hmm. to me, I'm gonna be able to use this, I, I envision as gold. Um, so then I went and pulled up their warranty and number eight item on their warranty says the homeowner is responsible for caulking of the windows. This company, and, and I'll let you review it. I, I messaged it to you already to see if you want to cool. send it out to the whole group. Um, yeah. It's, but now I'm going to ask the customer while I'm doing the walk around, hey, how often are you caulking and sealing your windows? Or how often would you like to be caulking and sealing your windows? Exactly. That's considered maintenance. Right. And it's look at the video and then read the, the warranty. It's it, it, and these are all faces people in San Diego are going to recognize. Very cool, man. I like it. I'll, I'll take a look at that thing. For sure. All right. Uh, Michelle. Good morning. Good morning. So the needs commitment is something that I'm not, I'm struggling with that. It seems pretty easy, but as I mentioned to you before, um, the ones that I'm going out, the need is uh, more difficult to find. So okay. I'm noticing that that and, um, you know, listening to Jessica, as far as the inspection, you know, asking the questions, what do you, you know, getting them engaged in that inspection instead of telling them what is going on. I think I need to do that a lot more. Well, I don't think I know you need to do that a lot more. That's yeah. Not, uh, that's not a question. That's no question. Because if you don't, if you don't, you're just tell selling. And nobody wants to be told what to do, right? They want to, they want to be helped. They want to, they want you to help them. Buy, right not tell them what to do, right right kind of like kind of like even our kids right i can tell you what to do or i can help you do it they want to be helped they don't they don't want to be told right it sucks to be told to do anything 
if you if you help them and teach them the why, then it's a lot better, right? So again, you know, help me. What's what's going on here? Fast forward six months from now, what would you do? Bathroom would be doing your bathroom's not right. And anything that's got grout, remember that sand, which is going to create basically moisture, which is going to grow bacteria and mildew inside of it. So anytime you have basically grout, I don't care if it's clean or not. It's what it's not what you can see. It's what you can't see that's the problem. And that's where you got to get your head wrapped around there. And if it's a fiberglass mold and you don't know how to kill a fiberglass mold, you need to study up on fiberglass because it is a disgusting, vile, gross material in a bathroom because it's a mold, right? There's no coatings. There's no acrylic on it. There's nothing. It's just pure disgustingness is what it is inside a bathroom. And if you really research tile and grout and tile, that's absolutely disgusting as well. Right, all you got to do is look at even tile floors that have been sitting there for a long time, the bacteria that grows on it. It's almost better for you to wear socks on that thing and get the infection in your socks rather than on your foot. So you got to look at basically just do your research on these materials, pull out things you feel like you're going to warranty. You know, look at a look at warranty on grout and tile and what causes them to go bad and then start showing people this stuff, right? Third party expert opinion. Become an expert at what we do so you can inspect what you know, not what you're guessing. Good stuff, though. All right, Janet. Hey. Hey. Dang, it's <laughs> hot in here. That's what I said. Hey. Um, okay, so one of the things I'm doing is, well, when I went to training the second time, um, I realized there's two distinct separations in the inspection. One is the questions. And I keep the questionnaire on my clipboard and I'm still using that um, and asking the four questions, uh, the how long has it been a problem? What have you done to fix it? How much money? And have you given up trying to fix it to try to get that need commitment? And then yeah. the second part is the permission to inspect. Like I can't do them at the same time, which is what I was doing before, trying to inspect and ask questions. I need to do the question and all that first, really fill up, you know, find out where the pain points are and then permission to inspect and notice like the cracks in the stucco and the weak holes and talk about, you know, point that stuff out and ask them if they even know what it is. Do you know what that hole is right there? That kind of thing. So that's it. Perfect. That's actually really good. I love the fact you went through training twice because you knew you needed it, right? That's uh because you got so far away from doing the things you were taught to do the first time that you need to get back in and go back to it again. Good job, by the way. And you're, uh, you know, your results are showing us. So we appreciate you. Um, Mr. Mark Moore. Yeah, Mr. Rhodes. Um, I would say I, I went back over the old needs uh, video. One of the things that I've been trying to apply um, is the branching questions. So you, you go through the, you know, the, the pre-commitments, uh, you know, how long has it been like this? What have you tried to do to fix it? How much time and money have you spent? We agree these windows definitely or door needs to be replaced. But in between all of that, it's once you get the fact, what's currently going on, what do they not like? What do they like about the windows or doors? What do they not like? What do they want to change? What do they want to keep? Things like that. But it's, for me, the branching question has become more emotional, illicit emotions. So it's not just, okay, this is what's going on. Well, how does that make you feel? How long has it been like this? Does that bother you? Um, has that changed your, your normal way of life? In what way does it change your normal way of life? So if it's heat, does that affect where you sit in the morning? Do you have, you know, tell me about it. What does, it, what does that look like? Um, you know, so you talked about our value. So I try to, we know when we get to that point, uh, we discuss that. But I, for me, the big thing is trying to elicit emotion and then to find where the urgency can come from that. Um, you know, when it comes to like security issues, security, broken glass, locks that don't lock, things like that, then that becomes an urgency. You know, does that concern you that someone could easily break into your house? Has that ever happened? Do you know of any neighbors where that's happened? So I'm trying to elicit more of the emotions from them and to get them to actually own it. Those are, that's, that's what I'm really trying to focus on right now. 
So if you focus on the art of the question too, it's twice as powerful as any statement you're going to say. So Mark, let me ask you a question. When you talk about security and these doors being unsecure, at what part of the door do you feel like is the most unsecure and then why? Yeah, and then, then you they... sit there and you, and you sit there and have them answer it. Okay. And what, what would you do different? Okay. Well, wow. That's, I understand. Right. So let me ask you, have you known someone that had a door like this to have their house broke into? Have you had anyone try to break into your house that way? Man, you know, they say, basically, I, I saw that it said 80% of consumers are people under the age of 24 mark that literally are generally on drug problems trying to make it into your house so they can steal an item so they can go back and sell drugs unfortunately they look for easy targets and just like you said you know good good job on being aware doors like this are a target so it sounds like to me basically you don't want to be somebody's target right obviously the last thing you want to do is sleep in bed at night and hear somebody trying to ruffle in through a door you know is unsecure sounds like to me is there anything else about the door besides security that's important to you? But that, that sounds pretty much like a big enough reason to change it right there, right? Is there anything you've done to try to fix this door? I see the stick. How's that working for you? Right. See what I'm saying? I do. Get into, the, get into those questions, right? I said, God, you know what? The bad thing is I know that door is more money you want to spend, but you know, can you put a value on your family and your safety? Is there anything this door is not doing that you need it to do? I mean, would you feel more secure with this door inside here, even though it's more money than you're going to spend? Everything's more expensive. But again, you already have a cheap door. The last thing you do is replace it with another cheap door that's not really fixing your problem, right? You're talking about basically heat distortion and things going back here. First, put a secure door in here. That's why we have to go with what we had to go with, man. I said, you know, basically, can you see the value in what we're trying to ask you for, bud? Yeah, it's more money. I get it, but let's let's open account and do a monthly, like you said. So how's that three? How's that basically one twenty three fit in the budget? Remember, take it back to their pain. Just the whole purpose of why you do an inspection is not to basically, not just to do an inspection to just do the action. And so when we get down to the end of it, we got something to tie back to it in, right? Is there ever a time when you told me you're pretty nervous about that door, right? Is there ever a time if something happened to your family, do you think the cost of what would happen to your family would be greater than what that door is? I mean, so really, we're talking the difference of the reduce the ridiculous based on what they want to pay. We're talking the difference of $8 a day for like the next 12 months, dude. That's nothing. You can't tell me eight, your family's not worth $8 a day worth of safety, right? Let's talk about your insurance. Let's talk about all these other things. But again, getting that reduce the ridiculous, you got to get them in a mindset. And the way you get them is by using their own words, their own action, their own slice of life. Remember, how long have you owned their house? Zero. You've never owned their house. So how do I keep somebody engaged? And how am I supposed to tie them back to pains and problems in their house if I don't know that information? If all you're doing is basically going through and blabbing information and blabbing inspection points and blabbing all that other stuff, and you're not really giving them time to get involved into it, number one, that's your presentation, not theirs. It's your inspection, not theirs. It's your product presentation, not theirs. It's your resolution, not theirs. It's your value, not theirs. It's your give to get, not theirs. Hopefully that makes a little sense, right? I'm trying to make light bulbs go on mm -hmm. here. Yep. But again, that's one of the biggest keys of it is I don't care what I have to say till I know what they, what they have to say about it. Because like chess, if I don't know what move they're making, why do, how do I know how to say two moves ahead of them? Does that make sense? Well, it does. Yeah, it does. So just always think in those fashions, man. If I can pull information and questions out, I'm going to be twice as far as I'm going to be before, right? Because now safety, well, let's put you in a slice of life. Fast forward, say something, you know, God forsaken did happen. Could you ever erase that from your memory? Could you ever erase that? Would you ever feel secure in your own home? You know, so... You can take safety, you can take that to a new level. You can take operational liability and talk about fire safety, right? We get, it, every year it seems like it gets a little closer, right? You ever had to deal with a fire before? No, if you did, you'd be super concerned about it, right? So let's talk about getting ahead of this thing. You can talk about, so if that window doesn't operate, your kid's in here, right? Especially if you got kids, your seven-year-old, eight-year-old, 10-year-old's in here, 
you know, you're having a hard time opening the window. And what do you think they're going to be like? Do you think your wife can open it? Do you think your seven-year-old or 10-year-old or four-year-old or nine-year-old or 13-year-old can open that window? If they didn't and something happened where that was their only escape, I mean, that would be a bad, that'd be bad news, right? Could you ever picture that? Them having you sitting outside watching the fire department trying to get your daughter out of the window or your son out of the window. It's just disgusting. We don't want to think about that, do we? Sounds like to me, we want to get ahead of that before it ever happens. Would you agree? Put them in a slice of life, right? Scare the shit out of them. That's what you're there for. Yep. Sli paint that slice of life they're not thinking where only where they're only concerned about price or getting the project done and trying to treat like commodity. Get how do you get them off commodity? It's all in the inspection. They want to trust you to take care of their problem, right? What makes you their valued asset? Robert, what you got, my man? You there, Mr. Faithful? Might be driving your lead, so we'll give you a variance a few minutes here. But the challenge is, guys, in this whole thing, why I want to why I wanted to go through this is I want you to think about how to put it on steroids, right? We got vitamin S. We got our steroids we're throwing through here, man. I don't care if it's an inspection on a bathroom. I don't care if it's an inspection in a, on a door, on a window. You know, on the doors, we have our inspection sheets. On the bathrooms, we have our sheets we at, talk about in the beginning, the questions we ask in the end, which should be bare minimum. But we want to make sure we're eliciting the pain and allowing it to be their pain, not our pain. They need to own it. We don't own it. Why is it their inspection? Why is it their company story? Why is it their resolution? Why is it their give to get? Why is it relating to them? And why is it important to them through their eyes, right? Am I looking through my lenses or I have empathy and I'm looking through their lenses? Are we working together on the problem or am I the one telling them what to do the whole, the whole freaking nature of the way? Now, some people you got to tell what to do, but most people, we want to make sure, again, we're making it theirs. They own it. We don't. Their house, not ours. All right, Robert. As uh, salespeople, a lot of times we try to avoid any kind of awkwardness. Um, and I think that's why sometimes uh, when we're uh, going through these pain points or anything, we're not spending enough time on them. And I, I think you make a great point that, no, that's exactly what we want to do. And there's a lot of times during a presentation where you're trying to avoid awkwardness and you're trying to make things go smooth. Uh, but there's other times that you're pointing out where we need to be patient, shut up, and let the moment sit there and uh, savor for a minute. minute. And uh, that's what's going to help them make those realizations that we use to drive home the value of our service. Yes. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Right? So, again, remember, just like a Christmas, just like a Christmas present, right? I want you to remember a Christmas present today, right? If I start going into solution too early, I'm telling them what the Christmas present is that they got to open at the end of it. There's no excitement, right? That's why they call the window door or the basic bath wall systems or the shower pan system we do. That is basically the star of the show, right? If you get into the windows, then basically the light kit is the grand finale, right? That, that'd be like a shower we're talking about, the, that, the easy clean glass, right? So we got to get into there. What's the, who's the star of the show? And the start of the show came and sang in the beginning, and yet all the all the pre-acts into there, most people would leave before the pre-acts even got completed. Because they came to they came, they got what they uh, they got what they came for, which was a solution, which is who they wanted to watch, and everybody else is just fillers. Some people would stay back for the fillers, but a lot of people are done once they hear what the solution is. Then they want to go right to the one thing, and that's price. Yeah, I understand all that. Just give me the price. You already know how you're going to fix it. Why are we going through this? I just need the price. The excitement's gone. Build it up. Create urgency. Make them lash out of the pain. Put them in a slice of life, right? Things in situations they lived in or what they could live in if they do the wrong thing. Again, get them to move away from fear and pain, not towards gain, right? If it's about design capability, well, what about the design that they don't like that's causing them to pain on a day-to-day basis? What is causing you to want to spend a dollar or hard-earned money just to change the design? What do you hate about the design? And then get them to latch on to it, agree with them. Tell them, wow, I said, do your friends come over? Do they like poke fun at it? What happens? 
You can find a way to bring pain in every situation. The problem is, what are you doing to get the education if you don't know what you're doing to get yourself the next level? There's no more waiting around because either you're going to get the results you need or you're not. And if you're not, sitting there on your own with your own two cents is never going to get you where you need to go. So again, who are you enlisting help from? How often are you role-playing? How often do you vocalize the role-playing? You're just doing it all in your head. In your head's different because, you know, just like role-playing and training, when you say it in your head and then you say it out loud, it doesn't come out the same way you're thinking sometimes, right? So you have to say it out loud. I don't care if it's your steering wheel, yourself, your kids, your wife, your family, your accountability partner, your best friend, whatever it might be. You just say it out loud so many times that you can't get it wrong. You know, Charlie, I like what you said yesterday. I was staring at my windows outside talking to myself, inspecting windows, and my neighbors probably thought I was crazy. Good. Make them, make them think you're so crazy. They come outside and ask you what you're doing. And you say, hey, let me take a look at you. I'll share with you what I'm doing. Right? All right. Real quick. Three people give me a takeaway from the day. Three people give me a takeaway today. Getting deeper, getting deeper with the questions um, when you're on the inspection, uh, going the extra step, making sure that I'm following through on that. So what have you done to fix it? How much money have you spent on fixing it? And just taking it deeper down the rabbit hole to, to get them more emotionally connected to changing it. Because isn't it embarrassing if your house is falling apart, but yet you haven't done anything to fix it yet, or you don't know how to fix it? Your hands are up. Such a big deal. Such a big deal. All right, who else? Two more. Slice I actually, oh, it's Charlie. I like what Jessica said, how she said he separates the two where you, you find out what the problem is first and ask the questions, questions, and then has to do the inspection, not blend them together. It's better to find out what the problem is first, gain all that information, like you said, fill up, and then do the inspection, not together. Exactly. Right. That was Janet, by the way. But yeah, absolutely. Sorry. I agree with it. That's it. Because you're separating church and state, right? You're still in fill up mode when you're asking the questions. You're still in fill up mode when you ask the questions. The second you ask permission to inspect, you're done hearing what they have to say, right? Then you're just involving them and asking them questions. Does that make sense? Do you understand how that affects you? Can you, can you see why that would be a problem? Again, watch that freaking video. Watch that freaking video. If you don't watch the video, I'm going to fire you. Everybody. Because it means you don't care about your job. And I don't, I don't scare you with that very often. But it's to the point where it's ridiculous almost sometimes, right? You got the content in front of your face. Use it. Okay? I can't want it more than you do. It drives me insane. So use it. Abuse. I did that one and now you guys have it. So use it. And then what, and when you use it, give me feedback on what you think. Maybe there's something you would even do different or better. Come on, bring it. Let's get better. Let's grow. Let's make money. All right. Who else? One last person. Um, asking, not, not explaining in the inspection. Now I, I'm going to start asking people, what do you think, you know, maybe this problem has been going on for three years. What do you think happens when, you know, mold grows behind tile for three years. You know, I mean, that's. Guess what's a great thing to have, Jessica, in that, in that scenario when you're going through? Remember we talked about last meeting? What's, what's great things to have? Um, pictures? I don't know. I feel like we've talked about so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Pictures. Yeah. Pictures, right? Kill folks, let's, let's see. Uh, this was somebody that looked just like yours on the front. Let me show you what happened behind it. Oh my right. God. This is what it looks like behind your shower. Did you realize that? No. Wow. You see, you just take your, you just put your inspection on steroids by showing that. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how you create pain when you don't see it. You show them what it could be happening that they might not be realizing, right? That's why I love that slide. This shows looks like the tile on the right hand wall looks perfect. And the back when they're chipping the tile off, you see all the mold growing behind it. You couldn't see that. 
Yeah, that's great. Wet always finds its way to dry. So find some pictures, get them, go on your string. Look at some of the pictures that I posted on the string recently about kill photos. Go to one of your installs that had top back behind there and take photos, man. It just shows you everything you need to know. Because what you know back behind that wall is you know what you don't know. Right. The one thing you know is if it's got tile, it can't be good even if it looks okay on the surface, right? If somebody has cancer and you go look at them without doing tests and diagnostics, can you tell they have cancer? A lot of times in early stages, no. They look just like everyone else, right? Until they look beat down and beat down and destroyed from it. You really can't tell the difference on side to somebody to somebody, right? If you're in the dating world, you can't tell if somebody has a bacteria infection. You can't tell if somebody is sick from, from just basically certain types of diseases or bacteria they have. You can't tell that. So the disease is just a surface. Or basically the tile is just a surface. It's the disease that's hiding behind the walls that you got to be careful with. Hopefully that helps get your mind wrapped around in a second. Yes, Gavin, absolutely. Having great pictures will help you put your inspection on steroids. You don't have good pictures, scaring of rotten knee walls, scaring of stuff going back behind the walls, you know, basically bad insulation that's been sunk down and so gross that you can't even tell you'd want that out of your wall anyways. Those are things that are gonna put your, that's gonna, things that are gonna put your stuff on steroids there. I'm gonna let you go because we got 15, 14 minutes to your next appointments or 10 o'clock appointment time frame. So if you don't have a point this morning, use that morning to study. Okay. You know, if you're scheduled to work, work, use something. What are you doing to do it? Call back your set, no sales, basically figure out anything you've been working or focus on learning something new today. That's going to make you better. The next time you walk into the next appointment was the last appointment you had to feed your family for the next two weeks. How are you going to treat it? What are you going to do different than you did on the last appointment? What are you going to do different today than you did on your last 10 appointments, right? How are you going to make this next 24 hours your best 24 hours. So again, you're reaching what you need to and getting what you deserve, not what you expect, right? If I get what I expect, that's not gonna happen. If I get what I deserve, that's a whole different ball game. So again, talked about like, some great tips here today, concerns. Hope you guys took some good things away. With that, we'll see you guys on the board. And as always, who are they gonna beat San Diego? Nobody. 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 All right, have a good day, guys. Yeah, make it happen.